history. The legacy continues. With number 30, Amon Green. The sophomore Ibeck already has over 1,200 career yards. He'll lead the Huskers against Colorado State next. Dr. Pepper Bottler presents the Big 12 Conference Game of the Week. Today, from a sold-out Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Nebraska Cornhuskers take on the Colorado State Rams. Hello again, everybody, along with my broadcast partner, Dave Lapham. I'm Ron Thulin. Dave, for the last five years, Nebraska has led the country in rushing, averaging almost 400 yards last year. This year, however, total offensive-wise, for the first time since 75, they have not registered 300 yards total in back-to-back -back games. Yeah, it's really surprising. They're struggling offensively, and the numbers will show that. They're not throwing the football real well. That's not a total surprise. But not running the ball consistently well, that is a surprise. The offensive line has to start playing better. The remedy is smash mouth football let him come off the line of scrimmage knock some people backwards and that'll start to take care of itself the guy that's taken the brunt of the blame for this is scott frost the quarterback and as you can see his passing numbers aren't scintillating to say the least what you have to do to get your quarterback and offense's confidence back simplify things run a few things well then build from there and the offense will start to take care of itself well the good news is colorado state's defense is next to last in the ncaa the bad news is their offense is good averaging almost 40 points a game and the leader of the pack moses moreno and this quarterback is confident look at these numbers nine touchdown passes on the season to six different receivers distributed the ball all over the field only three interceptions that three to one ratio is outstanding the key is though they have to run the football they've averaged 230 yards a game coming in they have to run the ball against nebraska for 100 yards in this afternoon's game to complement his efforts to stay in it ron well dave back-to-back -back losses don't happen too often here in lincoln in fact the last time was 1990 but during the regular season in the tom osborne era it is happened only once. That was back in 1976. We'll step aside and Dave will tell us what both teams have to do to win. Big 12 Conference football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper. Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska is the third largest city in Nebraska today. Now let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines team. Uh, Southwest Airlines, low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Dave? Well, Colorado State, they have to be physical in every phase, Ron. Offensively, defensively, and special teams. And they have to put the ball in the end zone. Seven points, don't settle for field goals. And no silly mistakes, no turnovers, no missed assignments. They have a small or a no margin for error. And then on the Nebraska side of things, they want to erase any doubt that was established last week against Arizona State. Come out early and dominate. No turnovers. They gave it away a bunch of times against Arizona State. That was a problem. Last year, they had seven one-play drives. They've got to get some big plays today. And those are the Southwest Airlines must. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff, Colorado State in Nebraska. It deferred to the second half and back to receive the kickoff, D'Angelo Evans on the far side and Damon Benning on the near side. And it is going to be Evans on the four. Straight up the middle, has some running room. Look out. Brought down on the play by Eason Ramson as he takes it all the way up to the 38-yard line. A return of 37 yards as we look at quarterback Scott Frost. And Dave, he has been under such controversy this week. It's been unbelievable. People forget this is only his third game as quarterback for Nebraska. Well, quarterbacks get too much credit when things go well and too much blame when things go poorly. That's the bottom line, and he's experiencing that right now. He's the lightning rod. Now both coaches talking about how important the first five minutes of this game will be. Nebraska showing just brute strength on the ground. Amon Green picking up almost 10 yards, and I think that's what they're going to give them. Uh, they're just going to play a little smash-mouth football, and Amon Green is going to be the beneficiary of that. They're going to run between the tackles behind that offensive line, and Green last year averaged 7.7 .7 a rush. This year, 4.5. Aaron Taylor will play guard as well as center this afternoon. Still trying to find the right combination, the right mix up front with that talented offensive line. We'll look at the Colorado's defense in a moment. Second down, just about a foot to go. Green looking for the rooms. Got the first down and a six to spare. 
Let's take a look at that Colorado State defense. Adrian Ross, the right end, is the man to keep the eye on. Yeah, really. He's got two and a half sacks. He's got three tackles for losses. He's been a disruptor so far early in this football season. Kwame at the linebacker spot, he's the leading tackler, but he's got a dislocated shoulder. He's wearing a harness this afternoon, could impair his tackling, obviously. McDougal, he took a ride in that first uh, snap against Green. He's going to play maybe a little offense in an emergency this afternoon, too. This time, the Colorado defense swarming. They had him, and now they lost him, and they got him again. What a big hit at the end. Damon Benning was the carrier. We saw Ross, number 44, come up and put the finishing touches on that little bad boy. You know, what, what Colorado State's doing here, they're, they're not really loading up the box on alignment. They've got seven people in the box, but their safeties are like extra linebackers. The outside linebackers are blowing up the field in a blitz, and the safeties are reading run. They're run support right away. The key for Colorado State is to tackle. Look how many missed tackles there before it was finally wrapped up and brought to the turf, even though it was thrown for a loss. Ross going to put it up for the first time, and it is complete and is good for a first down and then some. Brendan Holbein all the way down to the 18-yard line. Crossed an unusual motion throwing the football, but he got the results. Well, there was, there was a missed tackle on the play that was uh, critical. Corner missed the tackle. Holbein, this is, this is what we're talking about, about simplified, build the confidence, a little roll, short pass, completable football, and watch the missed tackle right there. It took a terrible angle, didn't make a play on the football, is Tyrus Nunn. He didn't get it done at all, and that caused the compound of the problem. Betting tries the left side, and this time the Colorado defense, Colorado State defense stands tall. Sonny Lubick, the head coach of Colorado State, he has done what no other Colorado State coach has been able to do in the past history of their team. In three years, he's taken the program to their first ever WAC title back in 94, cracked the top 10 in that year, finished 14th in the nation. But this year, he's got a almost a complete redo on his defense. Frost on the option, a pretty good pitch. They have some running room again, down to the 10-yard line, and is betting. Interesting, though, we talk about Amon Green. Benning, though, seems to be getting a lot of playing time here in the first quarter, and that is something that we expected, Dave. Well, down the football field, a big key in this football game is blocking down the field. And watch Holbein, number five in the red jersey, with the crackback block. He'll bring it inside, freeze it. That's the shot right there. Holbein throws the block on the crack, allows his man to get to the perimeter. Benning takes advantage of that block. That's the key to Nebraska downfield block. Here's Green trying the left side, inside the five, down to the three-yard line. Willie Taylor and Nate Kwame, the linebackers, come up to make the stop. You talked about Holbein making that block. The coaches say he is one of the most tenacious blockers they have ever seen. Well, Ron, one thing that they do, pancake blocks in the offensive line. They, they keep track of those all season long. But they also like to keep track of the downfield blocks thrown by the wide receivers and the running backs blocking for each other. And they'll have as many as 100 people on the ground in an 85-play game. First and goal. Green is going to be stacked up at about the eight-yard line. Steve Trammell was the first one to make the hit. And McDougal came up to clean it up. Well, listen, that's McDougal. That's the call you make. What position does he play? Free safety. Where is he making the tackle? Three yards behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's what Colorado State's going to do. The, the free safety and strong safety, for all practical purposes, are extra linebackers in this football game. And they're going to fly up and run support like crazy. Second and goal. High formation again for Nebraska. A couple of tight ends. Cross is going to keep it. Has running room to the five. Stacked up and is going to be brought down. Kevin McDougal, a redshirt freshman out of Arveda, Colorado, comes up to make the hit. Well, McDougal's been very nosy in the running game. I'll tell you, this kid is very instinctive. Uh, he was a great running back in high school. They've moved him to the safety position, and all he does is make plays. He's like a lot of great football players. He can't tell you why he does some things he does. It's just instincts, and he's got it. Nebraska only 25% on third downs this year. They've got a third and goal ball sitting on the four. Ross has a man wide open. Touchdown, Cornhuskers. For Sean Jackson, the tight end. 
And we were talking about this, the no margin for error for Colorado State. Well, there was a serious error right there in coverage. There was a brain cram. Either a linebacker or a safety did not make the adjustment in the formation to cover the tight end. He was 10 yards open. I'd say he was open. Yeah. Chris Brown to complete the seven-pointer, and he does just that. Nebraska very impressive on their first drive. It takes them less than four minutes. They lead it 7-0, and Big 12 football will continue after these local messages. Impressive on their opening drive. They lead it 7 0, along with Dave Lapham. Brian Nooner is on the sidelines. We'll be checking in with him momentarily. I'm Ron Thulem. Chris Brown, the sophomore from South Lake, Texas, the first freshman last year, field goal kicker and kicker in Nebraska history to start. Short kick. It is going to be David Washington from the 10. No place to go as he makes his way up to about the 24-yard line. Ted Ratzliff on the tackle. Let's take a look at that touchdown again, Dave. Well, here's Jackson. He's the receiver that's open. Watch what the motion does to this defense. Watch everybody get sucked up inside, and there's nobody at the linebacker or safety level to cover in the back of the end zone. Jackson releases clean. Look, everybody's bunched up inside. One grenade gets them all. He had three guys he could have thrown the football to. He decided to throw to Jackson. That's a big play by Nebraska and a mental error defensively by Colorado State. Moses Moreno at the helm. Calvin Branch, the lone setback. This is a high-powered offense. Eli Workman in motion. Moreno has the time. Pass is complete. Up to the 46-yard line. Jeremy Calhoun, the six-foot senior from Long Beach, California. Boy, Moreno had a little zip on that ball. Oh, he, he can throw the Howard, so I'll tell you, he's got a tight spiral on that football. He's got a quick release, and he's got confidence in Calhoun because Calhoun was covered pretty well. And he threw the football in, and he said, Calhoun, fight for it. Battle for the football. It's yours when it's in the air. Calhoun did exactly that. He won the tug of war. Pickup of 23 on the play. Two tight ends in the lineup now for Colorado State. Moreno goes upstairs again. And again, it is complete to Jeff Turner, the Iowa State transfer. He's up to the 45-yard line, and he's in Nebraska territory. Pickup of almost 10 on the play. Let's take a look at the offense for Colorado State. Damon Washington, the fullback, number 20. He can run. He can run, and Calvin Branch, the other fullback, they messenger plays, and they're averaging eight yards per rush between the two of them. Up front, Rogo Rogowski, he's the only senior, very efficient, effective left tackle, leader of the pack up front. Yeah, they're going to measure, make sure it was a first down. It is awfully close. You know, Ron, the one thing Marino was doing on this first drive, three-step drop, ball's gone. It's going to be a five-step, quick five-step drop, ball's gone. Everything in a timing pattern. They've run two plays. They've thrown the football twice. It's going to be fire and fall back. It's going to be a different approach. Nebraska's going to approach this football game on the ground and then Colorado State in the air. And the key is, will Wistrom be able to pressure Moreno, pressure the quarterback? He's got three sacks this year. He had four all of last year. Jamel Williams, I tell you, he has been big time. He's a playmaker at the middle linebacker position for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Minter's got three interceptions in two games. That leads the country. Seven starters return to this offensive lineup for Colorado State. Last year, they averaged 29 points a game. This year, almost 40. They keep it on the ground, and they're able to pick up almost eight on the play. It is Calvin Branch. Last night, Dave Lay, the offensive coordinator for Colorado State, telling us, yes, we're going to throw the football, but we will not be su successful unless we run the football. That's right. And I, I do think they have to rush the ball for at least 100 yards in this football game. And Dave Lay is going to try to keep him off balance a little bit. He's got two different style of running backs. Branch, as we just saw, is a slasher. Smoked the whole run of Washington, more of a cutback guy. Second and two. Two tight ends again. Moreno, three stop, step drop. Pass is complete. Good for the first down. Again, going to his tight end, Eli Workman. You got a flag on the play. There may be a rough in the quarterback. Let's take a look. That's what we got. Late hit on the quarterback. That's exactly what it's going to be against Nebraska. Now, this, this offense, though, cannot afford to self-destruct, Dave. This is a great drive so far for Colorado State, but they have fumbled eight times this year. They've been penalized 31 for 282 yards, most of those coming on the offense. They can't afford any type of mistake. Small margin of error for their offense. Right on, Ron. And the defense had a big error on the touchdown pass, an assignment mistake there. Dropping the pass against the defense. Automatic first down. But like you say, 
Colorado State is responding to Nebraska pounding the football down their throat on the first drive. Let's take a look at the hit. I think it might be Wistrom that gets the late hit. No, it's the cornerback on the blitz. The outside, Jamel Williams at the linebacker level, I should say, gets the late hit. He took two steps and piled into Moreno after the ball was gone. First and 10, ball on the 14 for Colorado State. Low setback. Gets the pass off, or play off, flag on the play. A lot of people moving on the line of scrimmage. Well, I think you had the right tackle, Bailey, move early for Colorado State. Tomich got up and pointed and said, you know, he, hey, look, he's moving. He broke out of his three-point stance. I think this may cost him five yards. Dead ball. Ball start. Still second down. Let's take a look at who I'm talking about here. Now, once you get in a three-point stance, you can't move a muscle. This is him right here. Let's see what he does at the top of the, the top of the screen if he flinches a little bit. Uh, yeah, he does. He, he, he resets himself, but that's too big of a flinch. Turner late to check into the lineup for Colorado State. Ronald Antoine comes out. Two tight ends again with Scholl and Workman. First and 15 ball on the 19-yard line. Washington tries the right side, cuts back inside the 15, down to about the 10. Pickup of nine on the play. Wistrom on the tackle. Well, one thing that Colorado State's going to do is they're going to try to run the football, just a little zone blocking inside. That time they ran what they call the counter gap. Watch the backside guard pull and kick out the backside tackle, take it up inside. The guard pulls, gets his trap tackle, takes it up inside. That's blocked very well, and they pick up significant yardage. Second and eight for Moses Moreno, the junior quarterback from Tula Vista, California. Great protection. Lost it into the end zone. Nobody's there except the cheerleaders. Well, Tomich doesn't get a quarterback sack, but he gets the hurry. And uh, he, he's the one that made Moreno throw the football soon. I thought he might have gotten clipped, but it was outside the pocket. The Thomas defeats his man up front at the line of scrimmage. Then he just hustles, hustles. This kid's motor goes 100 miles an hour every single play. And boy, is he one of Charlie McBride's favorites, Ron. Boy, he does. He said he just gives 100% every down, even in practice. He said it's a thank you for giving him a chance to come play at Nebraska. Every snap, it's thank you for giving me my opportunity. Third down and eight, seventh play of the drive for Colorado State. Moreno has had success throwing a football this time, a little bit too much on it. Intended for Turner, the junior wide receiver from Urbandale, Iowa. Yeah, that one released, that one sailed on him a little bit. His release point was a little bit high, and the ball stayed high. And this is what we were talking about as one of the musts for Colorado State. You can't settle for field goals. You have to pump it in the end zone because Nebraska already has. But Moreno, as he takes his five-step drop, Tomich once again trying to pressure him from the outside. The release point's high. No chance. Well over the head of Turner. No opportunity for a play there. Pat McDougal for the field goal. And it is blocked. Grant Wistrom, I believe, may have gotten his hand on the football. But, Dave, we talked about that they have a small margin of error. That was a big one. You drive all that way, and you got a goose egg on the scoreboard. That's right. You settle for a field goal opportunity. Your offense doesn't finish it off, and then your kicking game lets you down. 7-0 is our score. Nebraska blocks the field goal. We'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper, proud sponsor of the Big 12 championship game. A low kick, though. Kicker knew it right away. And let's take a look at Hess and Wistrom. They both leap to block it up the middle. Uh, due to the low kick, Hess and Wistrom, not great penetration. They just got airborne. He didn't get enough loft. It didn't come off his foot like a wedge. It came off his foot like a three iron. And Wistrom batted it to the ball like a, uh, to the ground like a volleyball player. Well, Nebraska takes over. First and 10 on their own 14-yard line. They had an impressive drive the first time they had the football. That probably took a lot of pressure off young Scott Frost. They're going to keep it on the ground again. He's got a convoy in front of him. Up to the 25-yard line for Nebraska. I'm on green again. 
Brian Nooner is roaming the sidelines here at Memorial Stadium. Let's check in with him right now. Brian? I have to tell you that the crowd noise played a big part of that uh, last defensive stand of the defense itself. Last week against Arizona State, Nebraska fits with the crowd noise at Sun Devil Stadium. They couldn't get the checks at the line. That penalty for Colorado State directly attributed to the fact that Marino could not hear the call. That's a good point, Brian. Now they, they, they face the hostile environment. Again, it is green. Thursday's practice day when we were here watching, they did pipe crowd sound into Memorial Stadium. They said they do it a lot, but even the coaches admitted, we got it a little bit higher on Thursday. Yeah, and what happens, Ron, if, if you're an offensive lineman and your only advantage is taken away, your only advantage against a better athlete across from you in the defensive line is the snap count. When you can't hear the snap count, you have to look at the football and move when it moves like the defensive lineman. You are in trouble, and that's what happened in Nebraska out in Arizona State. And their linemen, I think all the coaches agreed, they were back on their heels so much in that game. Frost on the option, has the first down or close to it. He had some indecision against Arizona State. Some pitches were bad, which he admitted, but today he's run the option very well. Let's take a look at, uh, at Dishman, the big left guard here, Ron. Here he is right here. Watch the big fella pull, and watch what he does when he gets down the football field. Now this is 300 pounds plus. Look at him redirecting himself in traffic. Now he's trying to run down the little guys. Squash. There he goes. It's just push him right to the turf, and you're digging turf out of your fingernails. That's a big guy redirecting himself well in space. Try to get the first down. Well, Nebraska definitely recruits skilled people, but I think it would be safe to say they build offensive linemen. They've got guys they saw playing basketball, thought they had agility, they had some size, said, so you can play offensive line for Nebraska. I'll tell you what, th these guys are 300-pound people that aren't real tall. I mean, a lot of them 6'2", you know, 6'1". They're movable refrigerators, you know? And when you, have, when you have a refrigerator that can redirect itself out in the open field, if you're a cornerback that, you know, that isn't even a, a mini refrigerator, you're in trouble. They got the first down, first and 10, ball on the 36-yard line. Cross changing the play at the line of scrimmage. But they'll keep it on the ground, and Colorado State is there to meet them after a pickup of about two on the play. Green now getting the workhorse job let's take a look at the dr pepper roundup a couple of scores to pass on to you miami sonny lubick was the defensive coordinator there a couple of years ago they lead clemson on top of wake four seven nothing that is in the second and navy by five over boston college we'll keep you posted on scores throughout today boy bc is a jekyll and hyde team they get smoked by virginia tech they play well against michigan and now navy's up on them this week boy they're up and down aren't they like a yo-yo big time second and eight for nebraska frost looking to throw it Across the middle, pass is almost picked off. Intended for Sheldon Jackson, the tight end. You know, if you weren't run the football as well as Nebraska does, you can throw the football off of play action a little bit. We showed you Dishman pulling out in front of the running play. Let's take a look at him right here as he pulls out in this little play action pass. It's a little trap action up front. He traps the defensive end, just keeps him away from Scott Frost long enough to deliver the football down the middle of the field. I think that's his first incompletion, isn't it? It is. Third down and eight. 534 left in the first. Nebraska leading 7-0. Frost again. Oh, that is, pass is knocked down. Frost completes it to himself. Not much running room, and he's going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. Adrian Ross came up with the deflection of the pass, the 6'3 junior from Elk Grove, California. Well, hindsight's always 20-20, but what you do if you're Frost is just spike it to the ground. Don't catch it. You know, spike the thing, knock the thing down to the ground. Once Ross knocks it up in the air, it's a free ball. And he knocks it up in the air. His teammate doesn't realize where the ball is. Frost should have just knocked it right to the turf right there and cut his losses because you lose yardage here. If he knocks it to the ground, it comes back to the line of scrimmage instead of taking the loss. Well, the screen pass didn't get enough arc on it. If you look at Jesse Cush, the six-foot junior from Columbus, Nebraska, averaging just about 45 yards a kick. Ooh. Jeff Turner's backed up all the way to the 14. He heads to his left. He is knocked down at about the 34-yard line. Pick up of 20 on the play, and that is where Colorado State will take over first and 10. 5-10 left in the first. Huskers lead it by a touchdown. You are looking at Terrell Farley. 
the senior from Columbus, Georgia. He is back in Nebraska's lineup. Did not play the first couple of games. He is a welcome addition. Let's send it down to Brian Nooner, Brian? That's right. Terrell was cleared to play after a two-game suspension. He violated team policy when he was arrested for driving under the influence. And as you mentioned, Tom Osborne sat him down for the first two tilts. He did not play. He did not play in that first defensive series, but he is in there now. And this is a big boost to Nebraska's defense because he's a Butkus Award candidate and an All-American. And Brian, I'll tell you, our offensive coordinator Dave Lay mentioned to us last night that he feels Fierce Farley more than any other defensive player on the football field in front of Nebraska because he's a linebacker that runs 10 500 meters. I mean, they can all fly. He returned two of three interceptions for touchdowns last year was the Big 8 defensive newcomer of the year. Play action pass. Moreno going for it all and has it knocked down incomplete. Jeremy Calhoun, the intended receiver, the true freshman, Ralph Brown out of Hacienda Heights, California, on the coverage. Coaches felt that Brown was going to be picked on. They're going to, they're going to test Brown a little bit. You have a true freshman back there, but he makes a nice recovery on the football. And this ball hung up a little bit too much air under it. If Marino could have led his receiver just slightly, Tomich gets a little bit of a hit as he releases the football. If he just could leave Calhoun just a little bit more, but Brown makes a nice recovery and breaks the pass up. Gets his head turned to make a play on the ball. Nice effort. David Washington, the low set back once again. A couple of tight ends for Colorado State. Our first and ten, or second and ten. Washington crossing the 35 up to about the 36. Charlie McBride is the defensive coordinator for Nebraska. He has been there a long time. He is a good one. He wanted to make Colorado State a one-dimensional team. Yeah, and he's done that the first couple of weeks his defensive unit has run. I mean, Michigan State, they didn't rush the ball all that well. I mean, they had 2.7 per rush, or Michigan State had 1.7 per rush. Arizona State, 2.7. So, Charlie McBride, his defensive unit has played the run very, very well. Well, they've had a few problems here and there in the passing game, a couple of assigned mistakes, but they will shut you down on the ball. Charlie McBride, one of the great ones. Moreno set the throw, and he is going to be dropped. The 12th sack given up by Colorado State's offense, the 14th sack by Nebraska's defense. Wistrom with his fourth of the year, first of the game. I'll tell you, with the reason that Colorado State's going with two tight ends quite a bit, as you've called during the course of the game run, is to try to pass protect against Wistrom and Tomage. The reason they were able to get to the quarterback, look at the coverage down the football field. You got a man underneath with a safety over the top, nowhere to go with the ball. Then watch Wistrom, gets the outside edge, sack. Tomich and Wistrom meet at the quarterback, both meet, beat their respective tackles. You're going to have to keep a tight end in there or a running back to help protect. McDougal set to kick it away. It'll be a short kick. Nebraska's going to let it bounce. Colorado State will down it. They'll mark it at about the 29-yard line. That's where they will begin. First and 10, still in the first quarter. 328. We were talking to the coaches, Dave, about Scott Frost and the criticism he took. And, and a lot of the linemen stood up for him. They said this was a team loss last week to Arizona State. Yes, Scott maybe not have played that well, but they really wanted him to come out this first quarter and do something to take these 75,000 eyes off him, or 150,000 eyes, I guess I should say. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Ron, taking him on a sustained drive and throwing a touchdown pass on their first possession is just what the doctor ordered. That's ordered. That's a nice tonic. Keep it on the ground with Green, up over the 30, down to the 31-yard line. Well, Tom Osborne admits that Scott Frost is the best they have at quarterback, so you might as well get used to him and like him. Well, if you look at professional football, of course, that's not the greatest standard, but most professional teams figure it takes uh, three, four years to, to get a guy to where he knows the system well enough to play. And uh, around here, you don't have that much time because, you know, they're gone in three or four years. But I think mean, it, it certainly doesn't make a difference. So uh, if you've started for a year and you've played 10, 11 games, uh, you're, you're obviously a lot, a lot more aware of a lot of things. And so uh, at this stage, I think Scott's doing well. And uh, the problem was it was a tough environment against a very good football team. And uh, we also had just enough breakdowns around Scott that uh, – some of which uh, he had nothing to do with that uh, it caused the offense not to move very well. So anyway, the, you know, quarterback is kind of a lightning rod position because that guy handles the ball every play. People assume that if you score a lot of points, it was the quarterback that did it, which isn't necessarily true. And if things don't work out well, then it's the quarterback that didn't do it. 
so uh, it's a, it's just a difficult position to play. Well, even Scott Frost admitted that he wanted to be able to practice at a higher level this week, and I think he did, but more importantly, I think he's showing a lot more confidence, especially on the option today. Well, he is, and he just ran a nice little uh, option right there, made a good decision. That's the key in this Nebraska yeah. offense. They have to make decisions in the option, snap-second decisions. They have to get them out of bad plays into good ones because the running game is so sophisticated. It's a mental challenge to play quarterback as well as physical challenge here at Nebraska. And the other problem that Scott Frost is dealing with replacing a living legend Tommy Frazier may have been the best college football quarterback running the option ever and it's like trying to replace Johnny Unitas the next quarterback after Johnny Unitas with the Colts he can't live up to that high standard it's very tough on third and short Frost keeps it gets the first down and Nebraska moves up to the 42 yard line they will have first and 10 well this is this is what uh, this is what we're talking about with an offensive line, though. This is what you lick your chops for. Let's take a look at Aaron Taylor at the center position. Snap the football, come off the line of scrimmage, get under the pads, lift, and then... <laughs> move some people off the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, that's the John Deere Earth movers up front at their best, just root-hogging people out of there. 6'3", 303 pound is the average for that line of Nebraska. Frost looks down the middle, has a receiver wide open and complete. Brendan Holbein was there, and Scott put a little bit too much on it. Yeah, let him just a little too much, and like you say, Ron, maybe not enough air under the ball to allow Holbein to run under it. But boy, it was there. And the reason that it's there, Cheatham trying to make a, a, a play on it, but the reason that it's there, look at the safeties again. They're within five, seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Little play action fake to freeze them. And you have a corner that gave up an inside release with no safety help in the middle. And that's when you run the ball effectively. The play action pass can kill you. That was Kenny Cheatham, the intended receiver. Green around the left side. Stutter steps, stays on his feet, gets the first down, and there he goes. Inside the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, this guy, he's a tremendously gifted athlete. He was running like he was a tripod right there. I mean, Jones made the play on it. Let's take a look at Green here. He gets the pitch. Watch, Jones misses the tackle originally. Watch Jones come up right here. Green freezes him, then he misses the tackle. Look at him put his right hand down and balance him like a tripod. Hustles down the field. Who makes the play down the football field, though? He doesn't quit. Back comes Jones. That's good hustle, you know. Pickup of 29. Frost wants to complete this drive. Gets it out of the flat, and it is incomplete. Now, that's the type of pass they wanted to get Scott Frost get his confidence back. Little short route to his fullback out of the backfield. Have some completion, start to build some numbers, start to generate some confidence, and just didn't throw that ball quite well enough. Well, one thing the coaches wanted to do this game also is reduce their number of plays, use less audibles. They felt that not that it was confusing, but they just almost wanted to simplify it a little bit for Frost. Absolutely. Do a few things well and then build on that. Big hole up the middle. Green stood up, but he drags the defender about three yards. And that was that was a, a McDougal, I think, that, uh, that took that ride, or was it? Uh, maybe it was Eric Olson who took that ride on that one. You better give a token up for that ride because look at the red seat part right here. Center and guard just split it. Fullback gets a nice block on the linebacker level. Look at this ride taken right here. Boy, you can't take green on high <laughs> like that. I mean, that's like you're at the circus. Boy, you, Olsen's going to get underneath him, wrap his legs up, and take him to the turf. You can't play high like that. He's off the field right now. Three freshmen in the secondary for Colorado State. The only one with experience really is Eason Ramson at the left quarterback spot. We yeah. have an official timeout. He got an injury over there uh, trying to work it. He worked his way off the field to the Nebraska sideline under his own power, but I think that's the reason they called the timeout. And it's Amon Green that's, uh, I don't know what his problem is, but boy, is he running the football 71 yards on 11 attempts. One of three players last year as a freshman to go over 1,000 yards rushing the football. And considering last year he started, last on the depth chart at that IPAC position for Nebraska. I'll tell you what, the kid averaged 7.7 .7 yards per rush. He ran for 13 touchdowns and, and, and caught passes for three more. Uh, you know, Green uh, must have been on that effort that he hurt himself a little bit. Frost takes a couple of big licks at the 22-yard line, and on third down and two, he will be short of the first down. 
fans want him to go for it. That might not be too bad of a call, though, Dave. You're playing at home. Yeah. Your defense is playing okay, particularly against the run. You know, you're at the 20-yard line. Uh, why not go for it? You make a statement here. Dominate early. Eliminate. Erase any doubts you may have in your mind as an offensive unit. And make a statement to Colorado State early. Jeff Lake split wide to the left. Eye formation. And that's the end of the first quarter. They're not going to be able to get the playoffs, so maybe Dr. Tom Osborne just wanted to have a couple more seconds to think about it. Scott Frost has played well. Tom Osborne's horse, Huskers have played well, and they lead 7-0. We'll be back right after this word from Sitco. Look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 country. Sitco says go. Head coach of Colorado State was hoping it would be close after the first quarter. He wouldn't mind a 7-0 score. And we've got to go out there, and I was just talking to one of the coaches. I told a couple of players that uh, we've got to come out of the first quarter in good shape. But, you know, I wouldn't even be concerned if, it's, if we're down 7-0 at the quarter. But it can't be something like uh, they've got steam rolling, they're running back, pines and blocking pines and all those things because they are so darn well coached and, and have so much talent on special teams. That's about as big a concern as everything else. Then, defensively, can we slow them down? That's going to be a real ingredient. and We have to find a way to do that early in the game. Yes, yeah, I agree with Sonny. It's 7 nothing, but it's not a good 7 nothing. Nebraska's blocked a Colorado State field goal, and their running backs have rushed for 104 yards in the first quarter. On fourth and two, Frost goes over the... Oh. Fully completed, he had the man wide open. Threw it behind Sheldon Jackson. Oh, I tell you, young Scott Frost would probably want that one back. Yeah, that's uh, that's all the quarterback right there. You can't... There's no other blame to be shared on that one. He just absolutely threw the football behind his intended target Sheldon Jackson and it's well executed up front little play action pass I don't know if you expected Jackson to settle down right there but Jackson was just taking it to the uh, corner of the end zone he was wide open then he's been open his tight end's been open for him all afternoon Scott Frost isn't in a throwing rhythm yet well there is a sea of red here at Memorial Stadium let's see if this Moses can part the sea of red they keep it on the ground crosses the 25 up to the 26 yard line Damon Washington, the ball carrier, out of San Diego, California. Coaches say he is the best pure back. Well, this kid's rushed for over 100 yards three times already during the course of the season. He's averaging 7.8 yards per rush. Branch is averaging nine yards. These two fullbacks have combined for over 800 yards already this season and 10 touchdowns rushing. This is a team that averages 499 yards a game. Once again, two tight ends. Nebraska may have jumped off sides and keep it on the ground up to the 31-yard line. It is Calvin Branch, another transfer from Iowa State. More of a slashing type runner, as you were talking about, Dave. A little different style between Washington and Branch. And that's good. It gives them a little bit of a, a change up to the defense. They can't get honed in on one style of rush. But Wistrom that time, I think, was one of the guys that jumped in the neutral zone. You can't guess the snap count. You can't listen to the quarterback. You have to move when the football moves, and not until then. Peripherally, you have to look inside. You can't listen to the quarterback, and that's exactly what was taking place there. Too many people listening to the quarterback's cadence, and he'll get you with that voice inflection, that non-rhythmic count. Outside, on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. And Charlie McBride's not going to like that. That's the type of thing that, that you don't want to have happen. You don't want to have any type of self-destruction defensively at all. That brings up a first and ten ball on the 32. Let's see if Moreno goes upstairs. The coaches at Nebraska really felt that Colorado State has more speed at wide receiver than Arizona State did. Moreno straight drop. Has a man in the flat. It is incomplete off his shoulder pad. Jeremy Calhoun, who didn't even play high school football, bumping around on that corner in a big way with Ralph Brown. Yeah, well, let's take a look at Brown. Brown makes a makes a play on the football. Now, does he contact the receiver before the arrival of the ball? That may be what Colorado State's talking about a little bit. Field judge reached for his flag. Jocelyn going around uh, down there on the, on the field. Brown gives the big cushion. It's at the top of the screen. Brown's off the line of scrimmage. He gives a cushion. Now he plants and breaks on it. He goes through the receiver to make a play on the ball. No flag thrown. Turner wide to the right. Branch the lone setback. Second and ten. Branch dragged down at the 35-yard line. 
pickup of about three on the play, setting up a third down and seven situation. You know, Ron, one play to circle on your play-by-play -play sheet out there, though, is fourth down. Tom Osborne decides to go for it. He throws the football. Scott Frost has his tight end wide open. Sheldon Jackson's wide open for a touchdown that would have made it 14-0. Throws the ball behind him, and because it's fourth down, turns the football over on downs to Colorado State, and they stay in this football game. That's a huge play right now. That and the fact that Colorado State had a field goal block after a wonderful right. dr opening drive. Right. Third and seven. Moreno being oh. pressured, and he is going to be dropped for the second time this afternoon. Wistrom and Tomich coming in from those end spots could possibly be the best two defensive ends in the Big 12 and in college football, for that matter. Well, I'll tell you, the bookends were bookends right there. They met at the quarterback for the second time. And watch how tight they come off the corner. And he ran a little bit of a stun. He took it outside to the tight end. The tight end was in the slow block, and Thomas just ran right around him. Actually, three guys met at the quarterback. It was a total collapse of the pocket. Saltzman got involved in that quarterback sack also. Boy, it was a big, big tidal wave to the quarterback. And Mac McDougal, first punt, went about 40 yards. He'll try another. Standing at about the 13-yard line. Three back for Nebraska. A short kick again. It is Fullman, and he is going to be hog-tied and dropped to the canvas at about the 32. Jeff Turner, the wide receiver, makes the stop. 12-16 left in the first half, and Nebraska leads at 7-zip. 7-0, but some bad news maybe for Kyle State. Their leading receiver, Jeff Turner, the transfer from Iowa State, he was injured on that last play, and we have it perfectly on this replay. Yeah, he's he's on the punt team. He's covering punts. Look at him on the ground, number one. He right there hyperextends his left shoulder, jams his left shoulder into the turf, and that's what they're working on right now. I wonder if it's sublux that might have popped out a little bit. Not a total dislocation, but sublux a little bit. Well, let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines storyline. Southwest Airlines, low fares, every flight, every seat, every day. Frost with 24 yards rushing, which is good because in the first two games combined, he had only 51. Moreno was hot early on, three of seven for 41 yards, but they have cooled off since then as they're trying to establish some type of running game. Nebraska takes over ball on the 34, first and 10, 12-16 left in the first half. They keep it on the ground with Damon Bennett. Well, Nebraska felt that all the teams they face this year are probably going to put eight and nine men in the box, and Colorado State was no different. They wanted to walk the safeties up. Sonny Lubick said, we want to show them a lot of people on the line. Well, let's take a, a block. Let's take a look at a block by a fullback Schuster on a linebacker Kwame. Now the offensive line does a good job up front. They get the position. Watch the fullback come in. Boom. Cuts the linebacker right to the turf. That's a knockdown. That's what the uh, offensive coaches from Nebraska was talking about. Receivers and running backs block. A uh, second down and one. Willie Taylor comes up with a crushing blow. May not have gotten the first down. In fact, he probably lost about a foot and a half on the play. Now, look at Taylor's left hand. He's wearing a cast on that hand, but the way he puts the head across the bow here, it doesn't matter. Boom. He wraps that cast up, takes him to the turf. I mean, you got one linebacker with a broken hand, the other linebacker with a dislocated shoulder, and they're out there giving every ounce of effort they can. I'll tell you what, they may be a little bit undisciplined, they may be a little bit inexperienced, but they certainly don't lack effort. Carpenter and Jackson, the tight ends, the pitch back to Benning. Gets the first down and four to spare before Kevin McDougal, the redshirt freshman, corrals him. Brian, you have an injury report for us. Well, we checked on Jeff Turner, and he's going to be fine. He's going to be back, just a little soreness in that shoulder, but they said he'll be back in that next offensive series for Colorado State. That's good news because he is a, a weapon in the, in the passing game. There's no doubt about that. He's the second guy in school history that's had three consecutive games of 100 yards or more in reception. So he's a key component out there in the passing attack, no doubt. First and 10 for the Huskers. Frost play action pass. Swings it off for a little screen pass. Colorado State had it covered exceptionally well. What an effort out there by Adrian Ross. Man, I'll tell you, it was a throwback screen, and Ross had, would had, have none of it. He played his defensive responsibility to a T. He's the defensive end. 
He locks up on the tackle. He sees the throwback screen materializing here. He gets right in the middle of it, bursts through the blockers, and throws the play for a loss one-on-one -on -one against Amon Green. That's a gold star on the forehead right there. Loss of seven on the play. Dave Lay, the defensive coordinator for Colorado State, felt they needed to take chances defensively because they are so outmanned size-wise and experience-wise. Cross upstairs in the flat complete. Short of the first down is John Vedrill, the 5'11 senior out of Gregory, South Dakota. 23 states are represented in that Nebraska lineup, Dave, as far as overall uh, player roster. That is quite, quite a player base. Well, it's a national power. It's a national power in recruiting also. That's what back-to-back -back national championships and really a 47-yard field goal that's just wide left they lose 18-16 to Florida State, or it would be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national championships. When you build that kind of momentum, everybody wants to come to your school. And this offense has nine homegrown Nebraskans starting. Frost on the option, has the first down. Pitches may have been a forward pitch, and that will not be a touchdown. You're right. Crowd might as well get quiet. The penalty flag has been thrown right in front of them. And there's another flag at the goal line. Let's see if we've got something going on there. Two flags. There's a flag that finishes off the run, and there's a flag up front for the illegal pitch. It may be two penalties against Nebraska, and Colorado State will have their choice. But the forward pitch may nullify everything. I mean, the, the other penalty is inconsequential unless it's some kind of personal foul deal. Well, the idea was good by Frost. Yeah, you can't. You, once you're in front of the line of scrimmage, you can't. You can't pitch the ball forward like that. We'll listen in, see what the call is. We have an illegal forward pass against the offense. We have a five-yard face mask against the defense. Oh, it's against the D. The penalty's off. Wow. Oh, we my. play third down. Well, that certainly helps Nebraska's cause. Big time. That hurts Colorado State. Yeah, and I think the face mask penalty occurred at, at the goal line by a very aggressive defensive player, Kevin McDougal who wasn't giving up on the play. He had no idea that it was an illegal pitch. He's trying to prevent a touchdown. Let's take a look at it as we take it down the football field. Frost turns it up and throws the ball forward. There's no doubt about it. It's about two yards forward. And then McDougal has his penalty offset. Frost has a man in the flat. They've got the first down up to the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Frost on the money with that pass. Big tight end again. For Sean Jackson, a junior from Omaha, Nebraska, a guy that rebuilt his body in the Nebraska weight room. I mean, he was he was a candidate for weightlifter of the year, and about every participant in the Nebraska weight program is a candidate. Oh, yeah. They really do a job in that weight room. It's outstanding. Boyd Epley, their strength and conditioning coach, the former pole vaulter here at Nebraska, 30,000 square foot weight room. It is huge. Wow. Great drop. No, hands it off to Mon Green. Crosses the 25 down to the 22-yard line. Ransom on the tackle. Great cutback. Great vision by Green. And Holbein at the wide receiver level throws another nice downfield block. But you never know where a talented eye back is going to break the run. This was not designed to go to the right side. It was designed to go off to the left. But look at the cavity on the right side. Great backside blocking, and Holbein gets a block down the football field. When you have a talented back, eight yards back in the I formation, he can bust it anywhere. You've got to sustain the block. 86 yards already on the ground for Amon Green. Green this time trips up at the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Well, Nebraska's going back to what they've done well for so many years, Ron, and that's smash mouth football get the offensive line coming off the line of scrimmage, kind of build a little bit of confidence. They rush for over 100 yards as a group in the first quarter. That's on pace for a 400-yard rushing day, which is almost what they averaged right. last year, second best in school history, but led the country. And this football team has been built on just hammering you at the line of scrimmage. Only 226 yards versus Arizona State last week. They may get that in the first half. Some running room down to the 10. Pater, Nebraska. That's Benny. Damon Benning taking it the final few yards, saw that pylon and headed right towards it. And they wanted to get better play out of the eye back in the offense, Ron. And are they getting it? Nebraska now has rushed 25 times for 152 yards. 
and Benning is capable of doing everything that Amon Green can do for this football team at the eye back. Boy, it's great to have the luxury of two talented players back there. Chris Brown tacks on the extra point. So Nebraska with seven in the first, seven here in the second. Nine plays, 66 yards for the Huskers. They lead 14-0. We'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper. Just what the doctor ordered. His first touchdown of the year. He takes it in to give Nebraska a 14-0 lead with 8.20 left to play in the first half. An offensive line with some wonderful blocks here in this first two quarters of play. Yeah, they're starting to engulf some people up front, Ron. They're really starting to establish themselves at the line of scrimmage. Colorado State not that deep defensively. And Nebraska might just be wearing them down already. Great point. Brown's kick is going to be well into the end zone. And they will not try to run it out. Let's take a look at what happened up front. The Cornhuskers doing an excellent job on this touchdown run by Benning. Center reaches, guard pulls, tackle blocks down, tight end blocks down. You got an unblocked linebacker that Benning just runs away from. Watch everybody consume their blocks, and he runs right away from the linebacker who can't make a play on it, and that's Willie Taylor. And Benning just turns on the Jets, and it's inside the pylon. Ransom, Ransom can't catch him either. Great blocking up front, and then great execution, acceleration by the eye back. It is still early, but this would have to be considered an important drive for Colorado State. Center have, yep, exactly, Dave. Yeah, he double clutched. Double pumped it. Hey, Put him back a couple more yards. He picked the ball up. He was a count early, you know, and uh, he, he, he wasn't. He, he moved the ball on, on one, and the snap count was two. That is Mike Newell from Littleton, Colorado, the center. Dead ball, illegal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Newell realizes right, you know, he's made a mistake. He starts moving the ball, double clutches it. I mean, you, you can't, once you start moving the ball, you just have to finish it. You can't start your snap, stop it, and restart it. That's a legal procedure. Dave Lay, the offensive coordinator for Colorado State. First and 15, the ball is on the 15-yard line. Moreno had success in the first drive, throwing a football and picks up where he left off there. That'll be a first down for the Rams. Eli Workman on the reception, the junior from Billings, Montana. Well, I'll tell you, Ron, this was a great release and great accuracy on this pass from Moreno. Good blocking up front, gives him vision in the pocket. He slides a little bit, throws between people. He just puts it right in, in the midst of three Cornhusker defenders. That's what he's got to do a little better, is slide and find a spot to throw. They put it up again. He has a man and is incomplete, and he may have gotten away with just a little bit of a push. Jeremy Calhoun, the intended receiver. I am very impressed, though, with Moses Moreno. I don't know about you. We talked to his dad last night. He's very proud of his son. He's got a younger brother yeah. and a 6'3", 235 linebacker, everybody wants. He's still in high school. Yeah, Notre Dame, Southern Cal. I mean, everybody wants his, his, and that's the way you have to put it. Not little brother, younger brother. The kid's a horse. <laughs> and then he's got another son, 13-year-old, that's a, a great player at that level of football. So the Moreno boys will be around a while. Dad was a very proud papa last night. Absolutely. This time, Moses is going to hand it off. They keep it on the ground. Calvin Branch is going to be stopped by Jeff Ogard, the senior out of St. Paul, Nebraska. Ogard, an interesting story. He was really nervous before his first start of the year against Michigan State. He said, I almost got sick to my stomach. I wasn't sure about starting and being the man at that left tackle spot. He gets double teamed a lot, and Charlie McBride really feels that's kind of a dirty job he's got down there. And he does it well, though, Ron. He's a sequoia. He's 6'6", 310 pounds, and he can't uproot the guy. He, he really does a good job stuffing the run at the line of scrimmage. Third down and seven. Daryl Ballard split wide to the left. One setback. Nebraska showing blitz. They keep it on the ground. Penalty flag is thrown. Nebraska lined up off sides. They came in the neutral zone. And uh, I think it was Jamel Williams, that linebacker, that, that came across the line of scrimmage early, Ron. They were bringing him. One way people don't realize, too, Dave, I don't think, and you might want to explain it, that one way to beat the blitz sometimes is running the football. It no, doesn't hurt. There's no doubt. If you find a crease and linebackers are blitzing, there's nobody there to make a play on it. Watch Williams. He tries to time it. Oh, a little soon. Get back. No, too late. <laughs> I'm in the neutral zone. That's going to cost me five. So much for quick feet. Yeah. 
Yep. He runs a 10 300, though, Jamel Williams, so he's quick. We do know that. Listen in on the call. Offside on the defense. Five yard pass. We're playing third down. You know what, Ron? All these linebackers were high school running backs. And, and on defense, they were defensive backs. They can all run. They, you got, they just beefed them up a little bit. They all run 10 3 to 10 500 meters, and they're playing linebacker. They've got incredible team speed. Jeremy Calhoun wide to the left. Turner wide to the right. Low setback on third and two. A third and five. Moreno is hit hard. The mouthpiece comes yeah. out. Yeah. Knocked his mouthpiece farther than he went. Whew. Boy, did he take a shot. But, you know, talking to Moses yesterday, he said, you know, I like to be hit. Doesn't bother me. I don't know if he likes to be hit that hard. I'm telling you. Put the mouthpiece back in, Mo. That'll bring up a fourth down situation and two. Watch the twisting up front. The defensive tackles twisting. And they're reestablishing different rush lanes. And Moreno tries to slide into a crease, but just can't quite get there. And that's, once again, the team speed everywhere of Nebraska. They have great closing speed. They finish plays. McDougal back to kick again. Three deep for Nebraska. They have eight on the line. This one, he gets it way up in the air. It'll be Fullman all the way uh -oh. back. He fumbles it down to the two-yard line, and that's where he's going to be done. Wow. Colorado State wanted a safety, but instead they're going to get it at the one-yard line. Nebraska first and ten. And that's one thing that Colorado State was hoping they may have a shot at. They, they, they're good at special teams. They invest a lot of time working on special teams. They wanted to make something happen on special teams. Well, it really wasn't necessarily anything they did. It was just a muff of a punt. But they are there to, to make a play on it, and it was followed up very well by Jones. But the, really, the, the, the problem was Fullman not handling the ball. He muffed the punt. Now they have to go the length of the field. 57 yards on the kick. 14 nothing. The Huskers lead. First man through, crosses the five yard line up to the seven yard line. Brian Schuster, the fullback, 5'11", senior from Fullerton, Nebraska. Well, this is one area when you've got a mismatch up front, you've got a bigger offensive line for the defensive seven presented to you, hammer them right between the tackles. Out there in Arizona State last week in, the, in that hostile environment, they tried to run an option and pitch the ball, couldn't get the audible and pitch the ball through the end zone for a safety. Play it safe. Benning dancing his way close to the 10-yard line. McDougal coming up from that free safety spot to make the hit. One thing that Sonny Lubick wanted from his defense was not only playing hard, but he said they had to play smart. This was a great opportunity for his defense to grow up. And they're young, and they're giving up 500 yards a game, but they're giving effort. There's not anybody out there that's quitting. Last week, they overcame five turnovers by their offensive unit and still won the football game because of defensive play. Third and one. Oh, oh, that's going to be close. He may have gotten up to the 11-yard line is what, where they needed to get for the first down. Devon Hawkins, the junior from Quincy, Illinois, comes up with a stop. And this is the guy with the most potential on the front seven. He's just got to start playing up to that potential, and, and he makes a play right there that holds Nebraska from converting a, a big third down opportunity. So now Colorado State is going to get the football in good field position. I mean, they may get it on Nebraska's side of the football field and have a short field to work with. Now Colorado State's going to put 10 men on the line as Jesse Cush back to, back to kicking away. He had a 61-yarder earlier. Ronald Antoine, the lone man to receive the punt. A little off to the side, almost blocked. Not a good kick. Colorado State should get good field position, good roll. Boy, they got a break there. That ball hit at about the 35-yard line, rolled another 15 yards. Colorado State will begin first and 10 from their own 45. And Big 12 football will continue after these local messages. The Big 12 rushing leaders, Byron Hanspard, we had him premier runners in college football. Colorado State trailing 14-0. They have it first and 10. Washington with a little bit of running room in Nebraska territory. He is hit. The penalty flag will be thrown, and that is a good call. Eric Warfield, I think, is going to be called for the infraction. The junior from Texarkana, Arkansas. 
Jamel Williams is chasing him out of bounds. Also came on that play. Those are mistakes you don't want to have. No, and you just have to be aware of where you are on the football field. Dead ball, personal foul, gets the defense, head out of bounds, automatic first down. You know, there's a there's a, a white five yards in width is this big white mark on the on the sideline. A little counter play. Colorado State's offensive lineman get out in front. Once you get into this into this white area, let it go. You know, kind of let it go. I don't know. It's kind of it's it's touchy though. I mean, you, you're you're sprinting full speed. It's hard to it's hard to stop on a dime like that. Warfield just playing aggressively. It's kind of a borderline shot. Well, now Colorado State with some pretty good field position. Ball on the 32, first and 10, 3:36 left in the first half. Moreno looking deep as a man who's tripped up. No touchdown, Colorado State. Ronald Antoine was fighting between two Nebraska defenders. No, I take it back. It's Jeff Turner. Somehow he came up with that. Dave, he was in a major crowd. He was, but Moreno knew exactly where he was going to be. And the reason that he was able to throw the football so accurately, tremendous protection up front by his offensive line. There was five yards of separation between any Nebraska defender and Moreno. Perfect vision down the field and threw an accurate dart. Boy, that was impressive. Turner, the transfer from Iowa State. Coaches felt they've got a lot more than they expected from this young man. They blocked it. The extra point is blocked. Two block kicks. One field goal, one extra point by Nebraska. And that time he kicked it so low it hit one of his offensive linemen in the butt, I think. <laughs> I don't think it got off the ground. Well, we're going to give it to Grant Wistrom just because we like his hair. Man. <laughs> lack of it. I'll tell you. you well, McDougal not getting much air underneath it. No. Jeff Turner, a wonderful story to transfer. Well, Moreno is now 5 of 10. Moreno is for 91 yards and a touchdown. Let's take a look at Turner. He's on the outside. He's number one on the outside. All he does is run a little post pattern down the middle of the football field. Just great concentration on the ball. An effort is made to, to deflect it, to knock it away by Booker. And he's a great cover guy, but Moreno knew he threw an accurate pass. And he had confidence that his man, Turner, would make a play, and he beat Booker, the best cover guy Nebraska has to offer. Tenth touchdown pass for Moses Moreno. And boy, this extra point was it low. Man, he just he never got this ball off the turf at all. It hit somebody in the back of the helmet, I think. Man. Now Moreno alternated a quarterback last year, but in spring practice they gave him the ball. Then he gets this young man, the Turner. Jeff Turner, whose fiance is battling leukemia. It has been a difficult year for this young man, but he has stood up to the challenge effectively. Yeah, he's a quality kid, I'll tell Big you. Time. He's got his priorities straight and knows what life's all about that's for sure and he certainly appreciates playing football 14 to 6 is our score it's going to be betting taking it about the five stutter steps looking for some room still on his feet <laughs> willie taylor brings him down at the 33 yard line and with 315 left in the first half nebraska leads 14 to 6 but thanks to the fumbled punt and great field position. Colorado State gets on the board. 32-yard pass to Turner. Took them only 21 seconds. Well, they were aided by that 15-yard unsportsmanlike personal foul on the on the sideline. And it was kind of it was it was iffy. It was questionable, but it certainly uh, helped the effort of Colorado State. But Moreno, what a great throw. Green around the right side. He has a convoy in front of him up to the 40-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at the 41. Now the fans wanted another late hit. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup. Miami all over Pitt at halftime. Clemson by a couple of TDs over Wake Forest. That's in the second. Boston College trailing Navy at intermission. Purdue leading North Carolina State 28 to 6 also in quarter number two. And Northwestern trailing Indiana. South Carolina, Mississippi State tied at seven. And Michigan State 17 nothing leaders also in the second. Second down and three for Nebraska. Green spinning his way close to the 45-yard line, be close to a first down. Kirk Bowman, the senior from Glendora, California, who missed all of last year because of a knee injury, having a very strong season at that left tackle spot. Well, Amon Green has already he's already rushed for more yards than he had last week against Arizona State. Last week he had 87 yards on 20 carries. Already today he's got 97 yards and only 13 lugs. So. He's certainly got a, a much more efficient day. Going reset tonight. the clock. Reset the clock to 2:38. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they're giving instructions to the press box. Want to put on 19 seconds on the... Uh, Reset the clock. There you go, 238. One thing this Colorado State defense hasn't done so far, David, and something that is something they haven't done the last couple of years, they don't give up the big play very often. Yeah, he's... Uh, that's true. I mean, they, they, they're taking some chances today, Ron. I mean, they got the safeties kind of nosy in the running game. They've only got seven in the box on initial alignment. They have the safeties kind of close to the line of scrimmage, and they, they're risking a big play today. Cross with a quick pitch this time to Green. Crosses the 50 into Ram territory. Amon Green has broken the century mark for the first time this year. 108 yards now on 15 carries. And I'll tell you, this, this is uh, going to be a little bit disturbing to, to defensive coordinator Larry Kerr because he wanted Frost to have to beat them in the option holding the football, not the pitch man Green. Second down and just about one. Ooh, hit right at the line of scrimmage, but lunging forward will be short of the first down. Hawkins again. He's a stud run. I mean, this guy is could could be their best defensive lineman. He's got the potential to do that. He's 6'2, 292 pounds. He's got the low center of gravity. He plays with leverage. He just has to get the motor out of neutral more, more than he does. Get it in overdrive. We have a timeout. We look at Hawkins. This is something that uh, Colorado State can't afford any injuries, however. They are thin there. Three defensive tackles, three defensive ends, and they knew that all those guys were probably going to play today because Nebraska just wears you down so much. You're right, Ron, and, and then you go to the linebacker level. You get you got guys that are, that are just kind of beaten up at that level with injuries, too, so they are thin up front. Now look at it this way. Next week they'll be in Hawaii. <laughs> they can take it easy before they head to Tulsa as we take a look at Nations Bank schedule. Proud sponsor of the Nations Bank schedule. Wind up with Wyoming on November the 16th. And Nebraska at Kansas State. Well, that's a big one. Boy, then they come right back. Baylor has really circled October 12th on their calendar. Then they have to go to Lubbock. They host Kansas. Oklahoma game usually at the end of November. Now at November 2nd because the big battle, of course, on the 29th. Nebraska and Colorado right here in Lincoln. You know, Ron, one thing Nebraska's doing is controlling the tempo of the game. They've run 42 plays now to Colorado State's 20 snaps, so they have a 2-1 to one margin there. Nebraska very content to just keep it on the ground. On third down and one, they get it as they move up to the 40-yard line. Green is getting the workhorse load. We weren't sure how much he was going to be alternating with Damon Benning early on. They felt, the coaches felt, that maybe Green oh, hadn't been Nebraska. playing up to what he should have been playing. Well, first couple games. Yeah, one thing they wanted him to do was run hard. He's been running hard before he showed a little more acceleration today, a little more burst. Ross looking for the tight end oh. down the middle. Instead, he goes short, complete to Brendan Holby. Holby, the former walk-on. Comes up with another reception. First down, Cornhuskers all the way down to about the 22-yard line. Well, pretty good idea. You know, uh, Colorado State, they've got those safeties hammering up in there as extra linebackers against the run. Run a little play action, throw the football behind them a little bit. You, you get a matchup wide receiver on a, on a linebacker. That's a tough matchup. Ross again, a pitch inside to Green. He's down to the 10, down to the 8-yard line. A little shovel pass. I don't think people realize how difficult that play is to run. And it's a safe play, Ron, because if it's not executed, it's an incompletion. It's a, it's a forward pass. It's a shovel pass. This is not a fumble if Amon Green does not handle the ball. The lineman pulls out in front a little shovel pass. He escorts him down the field very, very well. Amon Green takes advantage of some nice blocking up front by the big horse, Chris Dishman. Cross keeps it down to the five, fumbles it out of bounds, but it'll be Nebraska's ball with 101 left to play in the first half. Kwame and Taylor running Frost out of bounds. And they'll move the ball back to the point of where he fumbled it. You can't fumble it forward. They'll move it back to where he lost control of the football. This Nebraska used to be a straight eye formation. Since the 80s, they moved to that I formation, that option I. And since that time in the 80s, they finished one, two, three in NCAA in offense. And Tom Osborne just kind of went with the times, both offensively and defensively, in switching schemes. Well, he certainly did. And they're so sophisticated in their running game, Ron. They run one back set, two back set. They run the option. They run the power game. They run misdirection stuff. 
when you're a linebacker, you're mentally and physically challenged playing Nebraska because they show so many different looks to run the same type of play. They really keep you off balance. We've got a timeout with 101 left. Nebraska leading 14 to 6 and probably a little bit closer first half as Colorado State was as much as a 38-point underdog in this ballgame. But they are not rushing the football the way they had anticipated for Colorado State. Now look at that number. 192 yards for Nebraska, 25 for Colorado State. You know, we mentioned the way for Nebraska to get back on track is to start running the ball like they did when they won the net rushing title four out of the last five years and shut down the opposition running the ball, make them one-dimensional. They are certainly getting that done here this afternoon. Nebraska approaching 200 yards on the ground. Colorado State only a quarter of a century mark. That's unbelievable mismatch there. Of course, last week against Arizona State, about 130 yards running the football. Much more success today. Well, they want to do, uh, do what Nebraska does best. You know, that's just come off the football, pound some people, sustain some blocks, get those big 300-pound offensive linemen pushing and pressing, and get those talented eye backs behind them and see what they can get done. And they're, they're doing a good job of it this afternoon. Second down and goal ball on the four-yard line for Nebraska. High formation. Benning from the tailback spot. Frost is going to keep it, dives for the end zone, touchdown. That's what Colorado State defensively wanted to have happen. They wanted Frost to beat them running the option and not the pitch man. Well, that time Frost burned him. They took away his pitch right away. Frost turned it up the football field for a touchdown. He's thrown for one, and now he rushes for one. 56 seconds left in the half. Colorado State put six on the board, but Nebraska answered. Chris Brown on to attempt the extra point. Brown is perfect this afternoon, and with 56 seconds left to play in the first half, Nebraska has opened up a 21-6 margin over Colorado State. Nine plays, 67 yards on the drive. Nebraska averaging almost six yards every time they touch the football. Yeah, they're really getting it done. Uh, haven't taken advantage of every opportunity, but they certainly took advantage of this one. The offensive line, look at them reestablish the line of scrimmage backwards. Full back once again with the key block. Say that was detonation out there on the perimeter. Done very well by Schuster. And Frost just snuggled up cozy to him and just took it up inside his block to the end zone. A 107th year of football here in Nebraska. They are looking for their 700th win today. And Joe Paterno's trying to do the same at Penn State. Trying to get Penn State's 700th win. Yep, and they're trying to join the ranks of uh, some teams that have gotten it done. Michigan, Texas, Alabama. I tell you, that's, uh, that's pretty darn good company. Notre Dame. I think what I like is the fact that Bob Devaney, the former coach prior to Tom Osborne, and Tom Osborne had 333 of the 699 wins. That's you know what's amazing, Ron, is you think of all the all the numbers that Tom Osborne's run up here, but two that stand out to me at home here over the last nine years, they're 52 and two. Since 1980, they're 96 and nine here at Lincoln. Those are mind-boggling. They've won 31 straight here at home. That's incredible. He's never lost more than three games a year. Washington at about the two. Heads to his left, going to be wrapped up at the 15-yard line, a return of 13 on the play. Take a look at what uh, Coach Tom Osborne's done here. Look at some of these numbers are just... That's, that's impressive. Outstanding. And, you know, 23 nine-win seasons. Most programs would, they celebrate when they get a nine-win <laughs> season. He's down at 23 years. Look at that record, 82.5%. In the winning percentage 12 big eight championships that's getting it done i mean that's just you know you, you get to a certain level there's no seat at the ladder top of the ladder of success right. to maintain it everybody's taking a shot at you it's their bowl game every week and you're still sustaining it been in nebraska since 1962 moreno's going to call a timeout as the running play got absolutely nothing and at the line for 97 jeff Ogar. Tom Osborne, four-year starter at Hastings College in Nebraska. Played three years in the NFL, believe it or not. A couple at Washington, one year at San Francisco. And, and, you know, when he speaks of the quarterback position, he knows of what he says. He was a quarterback. So he knows what Scott Frost's going through 
trying to make the mental and physical adjustment to playing at, the, at this level of competition in a, in, a, in a system that's fairly complex and relies on the quarterback making decisions, you know, quite a bit. So he, he, he understands it. One thing that Coach Osborne is, is patient. Very much. I mean, he's loyal. This whole program, it, it just it just oozes loyalty. I mean, he's been here forever. A lot of his, deep, his uh, assistants have been here 20 years or more to get that continuity, and that's part of the reason this team has been, this program has been so successful for years and years and years, is you have that continuity. The recruits understand that the coach and his staff are going to be here all four of their years, and that really helps you. Todd has been part of Nebraska since 62. 11 years in his, as an assistant took over in 73. Second down and 11. 47 seconds left in the half. Colorado State with a football trailing by 15. They're going to keep it on the ground. Crossing the 20-yard line, it is Damon Washington. You know, there's a guy uh, that just came up into the broadcast booth that played with the Cincinnati Bengals. He was in Super Bowl 23 in 1988 against the 49ers and, and is one of Charlie McBride's favorites. Defensive end Jim Scow goes into the Hall of Fame here at, at Nebraska. And uh, I'll tell you, this is a guy is that, that the guy you were trashing in supper last night? Yeah, right. worth anything? <laughs> <laughs> this, this guy understood the game of football better than anybody. Got under your pads, tremendous body strength. He is a great player. We talked about uh, how consistent this program is. This blew me away when we were looking at the notes earlier this week. Look how long these assistants have been. Charlie McBride telling us, I, I stayed here because of my family. I'm, yeah. I'm working with a great football coach. It's a wonderful city. And Milt Tenefer, the offensive line coach, 23 years he has had numerous all-americans outland trophy winners lombardi trophy winners that's impressive it is you know and, the, and it sounds cornball to people you know that you talk about family atmosphere and, and uh, love and loyalty and all that but that that's it's the real deal here at nebraska i mean it you can just feel it everywhere and charlie mcbride he starts talking about some of his players when you talk to him and he gets watery eyed i mean you know he really it's like, it's like his, his extension of sons everywhere he's really into it he says it is a family on defense they call him the black shirts but moreno's going to try to put it up throws a very dangerous pass but the only one close to that was sonny lubick his coach Intended for Jeff Turner, Eric Stokes was on the coverage. And Marino shaking that, uh, Moreno, I should say. Where's number 13? And, he, and he kind of throws the ball like Dan Marino, but his name's Moreno. And he's shaking that right hand a little bit. Looked like he hit a helmet on his follow through. And that uh, that's an injury that quarterbacks hate for when they hit that passing hand on somebody's dome. Mike Fullman set to receive the kick. Fullman already has a touchdown on her punt return this year. Yeah, he blew one uh, up at Michigan State. He just blew him away. He got got to the got to the uh, the wall, and it was all over with. His longest is 62 yards. McDougal set to kick. He's at a 40 and a 47 yarder. Pressure's on. Line drive. Pullman should be able to return this. Goes right up the middle. He slipped to the turf, and exactly. in college football, you're down when your knee hits. And he hit it at the 40, a 30-yard punt, only a 9-yard return. But Nebraska still has 24 seconds left, and that's enough time to light the old fuse on some fireworks. We talked, Dave, at the beginning of the game that Scott Frost had a great deal of pressure. Coaches wanted a nice first quarter from him, a safe one, just to take some of the pressure off from the media and the fans. And I think he's done just that. Yeah, good numbers throwing the football, 8 of 11. They've kept it simple, giving him an opportunity to complete some passes, 71 yards. He's thrown a touchdown pass, and run the ball well, good decisions in the option. He's got a touchdown rushing, so he's coming along. Safety valve pass off to the side. Green down to the 30-yard line before he steps out of bounds. Pick up a 10 on the play. Tetris Nunn, the true freshman from Colorado Springs, on the coverage. You know, the, the thing that amazes me when I watch guys like Amon Green run is how still their head is. I mean, everything on their lower body is going crazy and giving you the, the loose leg and the swivel hips and everything, but you could put an egg on their helmet, it wouldn't roll off. They run so fluidly. All the great running backs do that, and he certainly is one of them. Nebraska has a timeout left. Let's see if they try to get a little bit closer, call the timeout, and kick the field goal. Green to Frost right. He's going to keep it himself. Quarterback draw. Big hole up the middle and a lot of room to run. Down to the 10-yard line. Nine seconds showing on the clock. That was a great read by Scott Frost. Well, this is this is a quarterback draw, as you call it, Ron, but it's a counteraction up front by the offensive line. 
They do a nice job of confusing Colorado State up front. Watch the left guard and left tackle pull, just like the old kind of tray. It's out of the shotgun. Direct snap to Frost. The guard kicks out. Tackle true, turns it upfield, and he's got green pastures ahead of him. Now Frost is nimble-footed, plus he's got a strong body. This is a guy that won the shot put championship when he was a senior in high school. He won the state championship, and the runner-up was his right tackle, Eric Anderson. Here's a kid that put the shot 59 feet, and he's playing quarterback at Nebraska. He's a, he's a very unique athlete. Well, interesting as we look at Scott Frost's rushing numbers, nine carries, 52 yards. I don't think they're going to kick the field goal. I think they want the whole enchilada here. Yeah, they want to go for the gusto. Let me get a couple more of those in, can we? Yeah. Go for it all? Yeah. Well, Sonny Lubick was afraid this might happen. He got down 14 to 6, and things were looking pretty good. I think uh, Tom Osborne feels comfortable with his place kicker. I think he wants to give his offense as many opportunities to get on track as he possibly can. He has, he has confidence that his defense will keep Nebraska in the game if they don't execute on these plays. He wants the offense to get something done. Ross, three-step drop, looks into the flat, goes for the money, doesn't get it. Plus, you had nine seconds. You can still come out and kick. Right. And that's exactly what Tom Osborne's going to do. John Vedrill, the intended receiver, thought he had at least a, two more plays left in that nine seconds. Well, what he wanted, he wanted to run a fade here. And his receiver tries to get that done, runs the fade up to the corner. The drow and the ball is just overthrown. You want to throw that to the outside shoulder instead of the inside shoulder. You don't want to give the defensive back any opportunity to make a play on the ball. Throw it to the outside shoulder, out of bounds. Chris Brown, two for two this year, coming into the game. This is a 27-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. Final play of the first half is a 27-yard field goal by sophomore Chris Brown from South Lake, Texas. The Huskers will head to the locker room with a 24-6 lead, tacking on 17 points in quarter number two. I think you'd have to give their offense uh, pretty good grades, Dave, in that first 30 minutes of play. They did exactly what they needed to do. Yeah, the only uh, the only miscue was the fourth down pass attempt. Scott Frost had his big tight end, Sheldon Jackson, wide open, threw the ball behind him. That would have been a touchdown. If they put that touchdown on the board, 31-6, it would have been probably a perfect offensive first half. Let's go down to Brian Nooner. Well, Coach, uh, Colorado State crept back in it, but then you close out the half with two nice drives mixing the run and the pass. Yeah, the last four or five minutes were important to us because they were certainly back in the game at 14-7, and they've got a great offensive team. I think our defense has played well to hold them to six points. And we've moved the ball sound, so we're, we're doing a little better. Yeah, coming into this game, they're averaging 39 points a game. Like you mentioned, holding a six. You've got your running game on track, it appears. Yeah, we're running pretty well. We're playing a little better offensively. All right, good luck. Second half, Coach. Ron, let's send it back up to you. Thank you, Brian. Nebraska averaging six yards per play. More importantly, they lead at halftime 24 to 6. More halftime activities coming your way from Lincoln, Nebraska, right after this. Mm -hmm. 